Hello and welcome back to the Deep Learning course. This week, we'll discuss how to optimize the weights of neural networks using the gradients that we can compute with backpropagation. This optimization is really a crucial part of deep learning, so it'll be good to look at it in detail. In this first video, we'll get started by looking at how the task of learning a neural network that achieves good accuracy on unseen test data relates to a problem that we can actually tackle with gradient-based optimization. Let's dive right in. Learning versus pure optimization. The goal of learning is typically to optimize some performance measure P, but we typically can't directly use gradient-based optimization for this since this performance measure P is often not differentiable, such as 0-1 accuracy. So we can't compute gradients with respect to the 0-1 signal. And that's why for optimization, we typically use a different loss function here called L the surrogate loss function. For example, for 0-1 accuracy, we have seen the cross-entropy loss as the most prominent loss in deep learning. So this surrogate loss function might actually also help us to generalize better. Here's a plot of well, training loss, uh, training accuracy and test accuracy over time, or as a function of the number of epochs. And we see that cross-entropy here keeps on decreasing over time, whereas uh, the training accuracy actually at some point, namely exactly here, hits 100%, and so you couldn't actually get any more training signal from that. You have already classified every training data point correctly with 100% accuracy, so um, we couldn't move anymore. But we see that actually from this point onwards, we still reduce the cross-entropy error, and that actually translates to improvements in the test accuracy. So because cross-entropy optimization is a large margin method, it tries to really push the data um, away from the decision boundary, or rather the decision boundary such that the data is far away from it, such that the data is most likely under um, the predictive distribution. That's why we can still continue to make progress and um, improve test accuracy over time once training accuracy has already hit 100%. So summarizing, these surrogate losses can actually have additional benefits other than only the fact that they're differentiable and allow us to do gradient-based optimization. The second way in which learning differs from optimization is that, well, actually, we would like to optimize performance with respect to the test set. But of course, we can't do that in optimization because we don't have access to the test set. So the risk that is defined as the loss in expectation over data coming from this true data generating distribution, p sub data, and we can't compute that since we don't have access to this p sub data, but we do have access to training data. And we define a empirical data distribution, p hat sub data, over this training data, and well, to that we have access, and then we compute this empirical risk here, which is just the same as the standard risk, except that, well, here we have p data, and here we have p hat data. And so that's a quantity that we can actually optimize in practice, and so that, that is what we run our gradient-based optimization on, whereas um, we actually care about generalization to the test set. So that's empirical risk minimization. And well, one thing that we can realize there is that, well, maybe actually optimizing L directly on the training data is not the best thing to do because, well, that may not generalize. So we can, of course, include regularization terms in the function that we optimize in order to limit overfitting. And regularization, well, that's a different um, part of the lecture, but that is definitely a difference between just standard optimization and learning. That in learning, we actually care about generalization. And in fact, we could also think about actually changing the regularization terms over time in a way that maybe nudges our optimization to areas of the space that we believe to generalize better. And so that's another clear difference between optimization, where you typically have a fixed objective function, and 
learning in which we actually care about generalization and we do anything in order to well, find weights of our neural network that give us good generalization performance. And that, of course, can include well, fitting the empirical data distribution really well by doing gradient-based optimization, but it can also include these additional regularization terms. So summarizing on this slide, we saw two differences between learning and optimization, namely optimizing risk versus empirical risk, and actually being able to choose the function we want to optimize or changing it over time. The fourth way in which learning differs from optimization, or in which learning is actually a particular type of optimization problem, is that the surrogate loss function typically decomposes into a loss function over the data points. So we have the loss function, in this case here, maximum likelihood estimation g of theta is the expectation over the log probabilities of the data under the model. And all that decomposes into the sum over the individual log probabilities of the individual data points. And that implies that the gradient of this maximum likelihood estimation is also an expectation over the training data set and also is the sum of these individual um, gradients with respect to each of the individual data points. And so this gradient is, of course, expensive, but since we know that it actually decomposes into the gradients of the individual data point probabilities, we can do cheaper computations based on subsets of the data. So we can also actually choose in which order to consider the data. Um, that would be the field of curriculum learning, and that is really not covered in, in standard optimization. That is clearly some part of learning that is not optimization so much. But um, we can also look at stochastic gradient descent based on mini batches. And well, that is a particular type of optimization problem. And that is clearly within the field of optimization and heavily studied there. All right, this brings us to the end of this video. And as always, I'd like to leave you with some questions. So I encourage you to pause the video here and think about these questions to activate the material. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.